All right, let's go ahead and get started, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining us from in the world today. And welcome to today's CA IDMS webcast. Just in case you don't know me, my name is Len Thompson, and I am Broadcom's Mainframe Division Community Manager. And again, I'd like to welcome you to today's webcast. Before I hand you off to our presenter, I just want to let you know that we are recording today's session, which is why you're all currently muted. If you have questions along the way, and we always hope you do, um, please use the questions box right under the GoToWebinar control panel and we'll get through as many of those as we can during our time together today. And if we have time at the end, I can also let you know how you can have your line unmuted if you prefer to ask your questions that way. Uh, the re recording of today's session will be posted either in, um, I mean, it will definitely be posted out in the CA IDMS community, either later today or later this week, depending on how quickly which webinar processes the video. And the last thing for me is that we are always trying to ensure that these sessions are as valuable as possible for you, our customers. With that in mind, um, I have a short survey that will pop up at the end of the webcast. I'd really appreciate you taking just a couple minutes to give us some feedback so we can make sure that the next session is even better. And with all of my housekeeping out of the way, I'd like to hand you off to our speaker today. So take it away, Esther. Okay, so hi, uh, my name is Esther Lee. Uh, I currently work on IDMS as a senior software engineer. Um, I've been here for a little over three and a half years now. So um, today I'm going to give a session about the CA IDMS performance and tuning. Um, this session is designed to show DBAs on how to analyze the performance of your IDMS CV and what you can do to execute any necessary tuning so that you'll be able to get the best performance from your CV. So with that said, moving on. Hold on, there we go. I'm just a disclaimer page. Uh, so this is just the agenda on what we're going to be covering today. So as we're going to do some tests, on an IDMS system. First, we're going to talk about the application and the database design integrated into this test system that we're going to be looking at. We'll also be talking about the benchmarks, goals, monitoring tools that can be viewed um, on your IDMS statistics. We'll take a look at the performance results of an untuned system. And we'll take a look at and we'll talk, a, we'll talk about the system changes and the buffer changes that we're going to do to acquire a better performing system. We'll also talk about ZIP and multitasking and kind of see the effects of enabling them, as well as kind of talk about some of the ZIP improvements that we've made in 19.0. Um, um, and then we'll review some of the conclusion and testing of the benchmarks uh, that was done. Um, at the end, we'll also match, mention um, at this in, end of the presentation uh, a couple of upcoming events that um, IDMS will be having this year. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some of the application programs that will be running against this IDMS system and how we're going to access it. Um, accessing our IDMS system will be in two ways, through VTAM, which is our IDMS DC online system, and from a KIC system. As for our applications, um, the DC online environment will be using a CA ads application as well as a COBOL DML. And uh, for kicks, we're going to have two different COBOL applications, one issuing um, dynamic SQL commands and the other COBOL DML commands. For our database design for the system, we're going to have four different records. We're going to have the account, history, branch, and telerecords. Um, and this system will have about um, 10, 100,000 accounts, 1,000 branches, 10,000 tellers, and one history record that will be inserted for each successful transaction. Um, and the records are going to be kept in two different areas the account history, and the branch teller area. Um, the application design of our program will basically all do the same commands besides the KIX SQL program, which simply does SQL command versions of the DML. So they're going to do some basic commands here, like obtain an account, um, modify that account, store a history record, obtain the owner within the branch account, and so on. So these commands basically force I.O. onto your database for whenever you do a modify or a store. Kind of just basically an overview of what types of commands are going to be going through um, our IDMS system. 
As for our benchmark runs, we're going to test uh, roughly a total of 80,000 transactions. So kind of just breaking that down in the um, DC online system environment, uh, 30,000 transactions of that is going to be through ads. Another 30,000 will be through COBOL. And then through kicks. 10,000 of the transactions will be through the COBOL DML, and another 10,000 will be through the uh, COBOL Dynamic SQL. Um, and those transactions will be stimulated through something what we call TPNS, which is a IDMS product to tell a processing network simulator. As for goals, uh, the focus of this session is in three areas of performance, which are to lower CPU usage, um, obtain sub-seconds response time, and the highest possible throughput. So these are our goals that we want to try and achieve in our IEMS system. Um, the first thing that we want to start with is to view your IEMS system with our monitoring and reporting tools. There are different types of monitoring and reporting tools that you can view. We have the interactive or real-time monitoring, and then we have our post processing tools. So the interactive real-time monitoring is when you view what is going through your database in real time as your task and your transactions are running. Um, and you can use the VCMT commands. Um, you can use our CA IDMS performance monitoring tool, such as PMRM, which is our real-time monitor. And then you can also use the OPER commands. Um, our post-process or when you view um, all the tasks after they ran and completed, and those can be viewed with the CA IDMS performance monitor reports for the application and the interval monitors. Um, do please note, though, that the CA IDMS performance monitor is an add-on that you will have to purchase. But um, if you don't have the performance monitoring tool, you can always use the S reports, which are statistics reports. And that, that, that's true. Um, so these next few slides um, kind of show you what kind of reports you can generate. So we have several PMA reports, which is our performance application reports that you can generate. Then we have some of our um, PMI reports which is performance interval reports that you can also use. And then lastly, there are all the types of S reports you can generate for statistics reports. So um, we'll be showing you some examples um, of these types of reports that you can do uh, in the next upcoming slides that we'll be generating for our IDMS test system. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this untuned system. Um, we have this IDMS system that is basically untuned to cause bad performance. The cisgen options were not really set to the best values, and the buffer sizes are too small. So we'll look at some reports that we ran and monitor some of our statistics and then take a look at those statistics. This here is an example of uh, real-time monitoring. Um, at this point, we have started our TPNS run, test runs, and we're firing off 80,000 transactions. And right now, uh, you are seeing the active user task detail screen. This is um, PS4 and PMR in main menu. Um, what we want to focus on is the task status and the ECB column. Um, the task status will either show a wait, run, new, or ready. Um, if you see a wait and run, that is what we generally expect to see um, when we're looking at this display. New and ready status is usually a sign of performance problem related to the CPU usage or um, CPU cycle availability, um, meaning that you're not getting all the CPU you need. And you can see that we have one task in the ready status. Uh, any task waiting on a PDT ECD, which is our program definition table, usually means that there uh, is a problem with availability in the free space in the pool. And then you can see that we're also waiting on journal IOs or waiting on IOs in general, which is exactly not bad, but it's, it is something that we need to take a look at as journals are the biggest bottlenecks in most online systems. Um, this screen is 
we're doing a DCNT display active task command, um, and then we're on the fifth page. And it's another way to show you what the active tasks are within the system and what they're doing. Uh, it does have a little less information, but this page is essentially the same as the active user task detail screen in PMRM. Um, this is an alternative if you don't have the performance monitor added to your IDMS system. So same thing here, we do see weights on the PDT ECBs, issues with the polls, and then the weights on the journal IOs as we saw in PMRM. And then going on to the um, last page of this command, which is uh, page number seven, um, we didn't notice before that there were uh, some tasks in the ready status. And here you can see that there are two tasks in the ready status, which once again can indicate CPU availability problems. Um, another DCMT command that you can use is the DCMT display um, statistics command. Um, one example, uh, and, and it gives you an overview of what the system statistics are after all the transactions um, issued. So this is an example of a post process monitoring that you can view. Um, here you can see a couple of issues. So the things that you may want to look at are the um, admin, the deadlocks, which is in relationship to the dead victims, and runaways. So these are just never a good thing. So the admins are incompleted transactions, resulting in more transactions hitting the system. And here we have 37 admins, which is relatively a high number. The runaways should be no higher than zero, but we yet we have 36. And the dead victim means that we hit a deadlock, which is when two transactions wait on each other for the access of the same resource. And then we have, so we have 27 transactions that never acquired the resource that they needed. Um, going on, uh, oh wait, one more thing on this page, we do have a lot of buffer weights. Um, 366,975 to be exact, so we're gonna have to address those. So going on to this next page here, you can see um, a lot of journal buffer weights, so we'll have to address that. And we did have a lot of um, journal IOs from what we saw in the PMRM activity. Then in the, uh, below in the program section there, we have many weights for space, and that was when we were waiting on the PDT ECB that we saw in PMRM, um, and with the um, DC and team command that we also saw. Also notice that this is below the line program pool and non-re-entrance. So we only have one COBOL program, and that adds dialogue running that caused over 1.2 um, million weights for space. So we'll have to do something here to improve that program loading. Uh, another DCMT command of a post-process monitoring is when you do a DCMT statistics buffer, which shows you all the buffer IO statistics. Um, the SQL kicks transactions uses all the um, SQL buffers, and then the DML and add tra transactions uses the DBCR branch and account buffer. Um, so again, weight, buffer weight should be zero. Um, as you can see, that's not the case here. This indicates that we, do not ha we don't have enough space in the buffer. And then the ratio between physical IOs, which are read and write, to the found in buffer looks relatively low, so we'll need to do something to improve that. Another command that you can use is the DCMT display buffer command, which shows you all the characteristics of your buffers. From this point, uh, we do know that we are having buffer problems from what we saw in the previous buffer statistics. Uh, you can see that the buffer pages in use is very low. Um, which could be the issue on where we're having all buffer weights. Um, same thing here with the journal buffer weight. The end use is only 10 pages, which is also pretty low. And the weights, again, should be zero. Then there, there's another command you can use. So we're going to be looking at a lot of uh, DCM commands here in the following slides. Uh, this one is a DCMT display all program pulls shows you all of your program pools. 
So again, there's a high number of loads in the pool below the line. And from what we saw before, there was a high number of weight for space. And with this is, um, this is something to think about because we just only have a COBOL program and an ads program running in our CV. So we'll have to make changes to improve those loads. Another command that you can view is the VCMT display subtask effectiveness. This one shows you both the TCP, which is non-zip mode, and the SRB zip mode. And this is related to the amount of CPU that the subtask needed while the IDMS dispatched in the elapsed time. Um, the total CPU time is how much the subtask actually received which goes to gives us the CPU effectiveness percentage for both TCP, D, TCB and SRB. Um, just a quick note, when you see NA under SRB column, this just indicates that we're not using the zip option as of right now. Uh, the TCB, um, TCB percentage should be close to 100%, but um, it, it's in the lower value of 19%. This indicates that the IDMS system is being interrupted. Um, the reason for interruptions is usually because of higher priority work, although paging and swapping can also be the cause of this. Because this is a test or slash development system, the percentage is low, but if this was for a production system, you'll, you want better performance for this percentage. So it will need to be higher and it's probably one of the first things that you'll have to, that you want to address. Um, another command here we would uh, like to see, which is related to our system, is the DCMT display statistics file um, of all of our files in the IDMS system. Uh, we're currently on the second page, but we do see a very high usage in the SQL workload, which is the sysql.sqldd that's getting pushed through. So um, that's going to be that needs to be investigated. Um, so changing out of the DCMT commands, uh, we're going to go into some of our PMRM options, which right now we're in PF8, the buffer I.O. summary. Um, this is similar to the DCMT display statistics buffer command that we saw earlier. And you can see here the values in the fourth right column is an indication of a buffer issue where there's not enough buffer pages. So uh, we saw a couple of that. Um, indication, um, a buffer had to be forced out of the system to allow completion of other IOs. Also notice that there's a high number of uh, BCRs, our buffer control record weights, which means that we're waiting until a buffer page becomes available. So we'll need to increase the number of buffer pages for this. Um, right, so these next few slides are going to be different post-processing reports that we ran against the system. Um, so we saw a, uh, in the beginning that we can run different various types of reports. There's multiple PMA reports and PMI reports. This one right here, this first one that we'll take a look at is a PMA application report number one, which is the task detail report. And this contains one detail line for every execution of each task reported. So the main thing that a lot of these reports have in common are the wait times, which is the main thing that you kind of want to look at if, as we're trying to obtain sub-seconds response time. Um, then you have your CPU usage times and the number IO and many more statistics here on the screen. Um, so just taking a look at some of these wait times for each task, it looks like some of these took a couple of seconds to complete for each transaction, which is quite a bit of time for how simple our transactions are in our application. Um, our application just simple, obtains, and modifies. So that's something to think about. The next report that we'll take a look at is PMA report two, which is the task summary report. And this contains a summary line for each execution. Um, so you probably want to take a look at this summary uh, report first and then take a look at the task detail report if you want to get a much clearer picture of every task. 
So that's just kind of an example run of this report. This next report is, um, is PMA report number three, uh, which is the ads dialogue detail report containing details of every execution of an, uh, of an ads dialogue. Um, these fields are basically kind of identical to those in report 01, which were, was for tasks, and this one was only for um, ads dialogue. So this is useful for us because our CV is running an ads application, and we'll want to see how that performs. Right. So going on to the next set of reports, here are some samples of um, PMI which are interval reports. And this one is um, number 13, which is the buffer, buffer summary report. And that contains information related to the database and journal buffers used for each reported interval time. Uh, the report shows uh, one line of information for each buffer access in a, in a particular interval, such as um, IO wait times, which is our DBCR account buffer. And that's around 273 seconds, which is quite high. So that's something I'll have to take a look at. Uh, again, next, another interval monitor. This one's number 30, which is the Interval Statistics Summary Report. Um, this one contains DC UCF statistics for each reported interval time. And you can see that here, this report shows 10 minute intervals. One thing that you want to take a uh, that you'll notice is that this particular report um, ran 80,000 transactions, and that roughly took about 35 to 40 minutes to complete. So you can see from 12:33 to 13:10 or 1:10. And then lastly, um, this is an example of some S reports that you can run. So this is S report number three. And this basically uh, summarizes all the system-wide statistics, uh, and this provides an overview of your system performance. And you can really get the same um, output if you do a DCMT display statistics system command. And again, if you don't have the performance monitoring tool, you can always use S reports. All right, so based, of, based on all these reports, this is the TPNS response time that we came up with. So after we ran all of our transactions, our mean response time was eight seconds for all applications. Um, we also uh, ran a, around 81,501 uh, transactions, and that, had a, and that came out to be 2,047 response per minute. So it took 40 minutes to run 80,000 plus transactions in this untuned system. And 40 minutes is quite a bit of time to wait for for those types, uh, for 80,000 transactions. Um, so now we're going to discuss some various IDMS system generation or system parameter changes that can be adjusted to improve our performance in the IDMS system. Um, here are some system statements that was changed as well as our operating system consideration. So one of the first things that we changed was our program definition statement for all of our maps, dialogues, subschemas from dynamic to no dynamic for um, excessive loading that we saw. Also, it doesn't say up here, but we also did change the programs from non-reentrant to reentrant to load our programs in the above um, the line program pool instead of below the line program pool to avoid all those wait for spaces that we saw. Take a picture. All right. Um, so next, we made some changes to the VTAM line definition to do permanent read buffers as well as do some exception response protocol. And that was really to reduce transmission time. Um, and that was also changed in the task definition statement. Uh, we also added a SQL cache statement um, to reduce the amount of activities in the sys SQL buffer. Um, and that can be that can improve the performance for our SQL environment. And then in this next following slide, we'll see what changes that we've made to our system statements right here. So um, you can see here that uh, the untuned or yeah the untuned values are highlighted in yellow um, on the left, 
and then the new optimized values are on the right, highlighted in blue. I won't go through all of the changes, but I'll explain some of the first changes here. So, for example, the first thing we changed was the deadlock interval to one, uh, and that checks for deadlocks for every one second, which means deadlocks can be caught and addressed earlier. Another couple of changes we made was we changed external weight to 60, um, inactive interval time to 180, and inter internal weight to 30 seconds. Before, they were set off, which means that the system will just assume that a task has admin rather than weight, and this forces um, unnecessary reruns. So that's why we changed those. Um, then we made changes to our journal parameters to help improve the journal issuings that we were having before. So, yeah, like I said, I just wanted, to, I'm not going to go through all of these changes because we do have another set of changes here um, in the system statement, but um, uh, these basically are optimal values that we've made to the system statement to help improve the performance for the IDMS system. Um, so, after integrating these changes to the system, we reran all of our reports, uh, we reran the transactions, the TPMS runs, and then we reran the reports, and we get the following results here. So, as you can see, um, we've made a major improvement as we went from 8 seconds to 0.35 seconds um, of the mean response time. We ran um, 32,143 transactions per minute, which is uh, which takes less than three minutes to run all of those transactions. So again, significant improvement because we've made changes to the system. Um, so now we're going to try to implement some changes to the size of our buffers and rerun the test. So in our old um, untuned system, we did see a lot of buffer issues. So we're going to just address those by just increasing the size of our buffers. So we increased our DBCR SQL count buffer from 10 to 2,000, our DBCR SQL branch buffer from 5 to 120, and then this SQL buffer from 3 uh, to 700 pages, and our DBCR branch to 10 to 500, and our DBCR count to 10 to 4,000. So those are in, um, significant increases to our buffer pages. Um, we're going to do the same thing as we did when we implement our system changes. We're going to rerun our tests, rerun our reports, and see the results of increasing our buffer pages. Um, so here is the um, response time. Oh, we basically went down from 0.35 in the prior run to 0.3 and our number of responses per minute went up to um, 81,516 uh, per minute. So, oh, I'm sorry. That we, we ran about 81,516 transactions, and our response per minute is 70,893 seconds, which is we finished all of our transact transactions within those two minutes. So we did have a significant improvement here um, after making our buffer changes. Um, give me one second. So the next thing I wanted to talk about are a few options that you can use in IDMS to further uh, improve the performance in certain areas of your system. So the first one I want to talk about is the zip exploitation with IDMS. So as some of you know, ZIP is the IBM system, the integrated information processor. Um, this kind of just enables offloading computer cycles to ZIP processors, therefore increasing overall throughput and lower operational costs. Um, a few things that I want to show you when you enable ZIP on IDMS is if you do a DCMT display subtask and then the number of that subtask, which in this case we're looking at subtask one, which is main task, and here you can see that the total mode, total system mode CPU is a 119 seconds, or one minute and 59 seconds. So, and by enabling ZIP, um, you get that enclave info down at the lower half of the page um, that contains all information about ZIP. Um, you can see that uh, 30 seconds of the 
system load CPU time was used to run on the ZIP engine, and approximately 25% of the CPU usage was moved from CP to the ZIP engine. Um, the CPU effectiveness is 103, um, which is good. So again, here, we did some simple test run, again, by turning on ZIP to see what results that we're going to get in our response time. And turning on ZIP didn't really affect the mean response time uh, too much, but we were able to get 81,000 plus transactions through in a minute. So um, that is some improvements there by turning on ZIP. Um, another uh, CA IDMS option that um, I want to uh, just talk about real quick is the multitasking option. Um, so again, we just did another test just by turning on multitasking in our IDMS system. And so far, this one is our best result. Um, now, with that being said, enabling multitasking is uh, what it's designed to do. So enabling multitasking reduces the response time. Um, it increases throughput, although it will use more CPU. So how much really depends on the application mix and the workload that it's running against. Um, so here, just for the heck of it, we just ran another test with both ZIP and multitasking on just to kind of see what the effect, um, and this is our result that we got by just enabling both of them. So it looks, it still looks significantly good, but not as great as just multitasking, but it's much better than the untuned system we had before. So these are just kind of a couple of tests to see what um, the response time would be if we uh, ran a couple of these options. Um, in this slide, I just wanted to talk about some of the improvements we made to ZIP. Um, one of those changes is that we now offload 100% um, of ZIP eligible CPU times to the ZIP engine. Um, this was back in release 18.0, so we were um, only offloading, um, oh, that's, no, sorry, let me rephrase that. So back in 18.0, we were only um, offloading 30% of ZIP eligible CPU times to the ZIP engine. So we've made that change. I think it was starting some mid 18.5 release to make that improvement to ZIP. So now we offer 100%. Um, so that was a, a couple of years back change. But um, another thing that we've made a change to is beforehand, user programs, which also included ads, were not eligible to offload to the ZIP. Um, but now we've made an improvement to ZIP with IDMS and release 19.0 called the um, Ad Zip Enablement. And that basically means that all ads runtime systems and dialogues are now able to run on the ZIP processor, which would not only increase throughput, but also reduce the overall cost for CPU. Um, so if your IDMS system is mainly an ads workshop, um, this feature will be benefit for your system. So those were just some overall improvements that were made to ZIP. Um, so these next few slides are just going to be some conclusion and summary of our test. So going on. All right, so we're going to show you some charts uh, to summarize our results. And this one was the response time for our application. So now you can see that our untuned system was eight seconds. We made some system changes. We got it down to 0.3 seconds. Um, and then we made some buffer changes, got us down to 0 0.32, to, uh, 32 and, some two, and turning on ZIP relatively got us the same results. Um, multitasking got us the best uh, performance because it dropped down to 0.22. Um, this is another um, chart. And we, for the um, transactions per minute, so our average output for, was about 2,047 transactions per minute, which was our lowest. Um, and then we made, again, our system changes, buffer changes, zip and multitasking changes, and we got that up all the way to 80 plus transactions per second. Um, so this chart here, we didn't really show in our TPMS results. And this one is the CPU usage for all of our applications. Um, so you can see that our untuned system, we had 417 seconds of CPU usage. So now as we made our changes, the, our CPU usage did drop significantly, but the most or the best drop was when we turned on ZIP 
which got us down to 96 seconds of usage of the CPU. And same thing here, but this really tells us the benefits, benefits use of using ZIP. So this tells us how much CPU was used in CP and then ZIP. Um, we didn't run ZIP the first three changes, so no CPU was offloaded to the ZIP engine. But when we made our change, when we made ZIP changes and turned on ZIP, you can see that there was a total of 126 seconds usage of the CPU, but 30 seconds of that was offloaded to the ZIP um, processor engine. And then you can see the other results that we've made when we turned on multitasking and ZIP. Um, and then real quick, these are kind of just showing you the improvements of our application programs. So we, for our ads programs, we went from a mean time or average time of 3.29 seconds to 0 0.02. For our kick CML response time, we went down from 17.62 um, to as low as 0 0.029. Um, same thing with our kicks SQL response. 18.3, um, 18.38 uh, to as well as 0 .03, uh, 0.31, and then lastly, our COBOL response time from 5.85 to as well as 0 0.01. All right, so um, that was basically it. This was a um, general high-level overview kind of just showing you how you can analyze your RDMS systems with our monitoring tools that we showed, and then tune it so you can get better performance. Um, so that is the end of the performance and tuning presentation. So I will hand it off to Nikisha um, to talk about some of our upcoming events with IDMS. Oh, thank you, Esther, and hi, everyone. I'm Nikisha Newberry, the product owner for IDMS. Before we take questions, I just wanted to encourage everyone, if you hadn't been aware already, that we have our upcoming conference coming up in the week of April 20th. This is a combined conference for both IDMS and Datacom database uh, users. And it's a conference will have one and a half days of pre-con material and two and a half days of technical and educational sessions. It fits the personas for both DBAs, system programmers, application developers, with a lot of joint sessions and great network networking opportunities. So we look forward to, to seeing you all there. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about the conference. And there's a few opportunities related to um, some registration discounts, and there's an accreditation um, exam that we'll be giving away, uh, di digital badges, um, a lot of other information. So please feel free to reach out to us on that. And then lastly, we have our upcoming mainframe technical exchanges. You'll see IDMS sessions at the upcoming uh, Prague Tech Exchange in, from May 12th to the 14th. And we'll have another one in the United States, in Plano, Texas, from October 13th to October 15th uh, later this year. So many new, event, new events coming up to, to hear more about IDMS and interact with our experts here. Oh, and I, I wanted to mention real quick that this session that I just um, presented is a much shorter version that we're going to present in the IOA. So um, during the IOA, we'll present um, this presentation, but in more detail um, on how you can monitor and improve your performance. So we'll, this was just a high-level overview. So if you want to see that, that will be presented in our IOA um, conference. Okay, thank you. Len, do you want to open it up for questions? Absolutely. Thanks very much, ladies. <clears throat> Again, folks, if you have questions, please do use the questions box right in the GoToWebinar control panel. Or if you'd like to ask your question over the, over the audio line, um, there is a way for you to raise your hand virtually, and then I can go ahead and unmute you. So we'll give you a second to type or to raise your hand. We do have one, oh, hold on, never mind. The, the person had his hand up for a second and then he put it back down, so <laughs> probably just testing out the functionality. Um, I guess one more thing I just wanted to mention real quick. So a lot of the details on how you can use the reports 
um, the performance monitoring and some of the DC, DCMC commands. Um, that, that can obviously be found in our tech doc site, um, but if you can't find what you're looking for, just uh, shoot us an email and we'll try to get you that information. Great, thanks. All right, I don't see any questions coming in, so I guess that means you guys did such a good job that there, <laughs> that there, are, there aren't any follow-up questions. So um, we, we, can go good, ahead yeah. and wrap, we can go ahead and wrap up. Folks, a reminder that there is a survey that's going to pop up momentarily, that, and that also gives you an opportunity to ask any follow-up questions as well. So thank you very much, and have a great day. Thank you.